Welcome back. I've been a little bit under the weather the last couple days, so please pardon the voice. In the next couple videos, we're going to take a look at Go routines. And to fully utilize Go routines, we're going to need to know the difference between concurrency and parallelism. So concurrency is dealing with many things at the same time, while parallelism is doing multiple things at the same time. So what does that mean? We'll take a look at that a little bit further in the next couple slides. Okay, in this first example, it is not concurrent and not parallel. If we take a look at our Golang code, it's not going to, it's only going to have one Go routine, and that's going to be func main. Now, func main doesn't have the Go keyword in front of it, but it is still a Go routine, and of course, we have to have func main to execute our code. If we were going to run, uh, spin up some more Go routines, well, we would just put the Go keyword in front of the function we wanted to run on that Go routine. Um, also, there's no use in setting go max proc, which is short for procs, uh, which would determine how many processors or cores we're going to run it on. When we only have one thread, wouldn't matter if we tried to use multiple uh, processors. It's, well, we only have one thread. It can only run on one core. So if we take a closer look at our core, well, it, it's running our code that we've, we've wrote. Now, if it ends up waiting, let's say if it needs to retrieve a resource from the internet, for instance, if it takes a second or two, that could be uh, an excruciating amount of time, you know, for a CPU just to be down, not, you know, doing anything. So it would just end up waiting till it gets the next thing it needs to do. Cause we haven't wrote any, any code saying, Hey, you know, if, uh, you get held up anywhere, you can do this other thing, you know, to get some more work done. I guess an example, uh, uh I live here in the States. So this would be kind of like the old saying about the hourly worker. Say they, you know, they paint a wall and then they just wait for, the you know the paint to dry as opposed to going and doing something else. In this next example, this one is concurrent, but it is not parallel. So if we were to look at our code, of course we'd have to have func main in it, but we would also have another go routine. So we'd have to have the go keyword put in front of a function, and so that way we'd have two at least two go routines, and it could run on these two operating system threads. So to quote Rob Pike, concurrency is dealing with lots of things at the same time. So we're dealing, we're dealing with uh, at least two different things um, at the same time, but we're not actually executing uh, the code at the exact same time. So if we have any downtime, we're going to go ahead and you know utilize this time on the other thread. And if it ends up uh, waiting on anything, then we're going to utilize that downtime on the other thread. So we can get a lot more done and really utilize our time with these cores. Uh, and of course, you know, being that we're only running this on one core, go max prox is not set. The default is one. And so we're just running this all on this one core. And this one, this one is not concurrent, but it is parallel. So to quote Rob Pike, doing lots of things at once. So we're doing these things at the same time. So I have a piece of code that's running here and here, and they're actually executing the code at the exact same time. Um, now there's some people who've actually set, uh, go max prox and they've ran their code and it's actually ran slower, which is a surprise for a lot of people. Cause if using more cores, the, uh, you would usually think, Hey, this is, this has to run, uh, faster because uh, we're utilizing more cores. It has more resources at, at hand. Um, one of the things to be careful with, if these two threads, these two, I'm sorry, these two go routines, if they have to communicate and synchronize. Well, there can be a penalty communicating between cores. Obviously, there's even a penalty be, you know, between threads in the same core, but it's much less than the penalty of that latency of you know, passing that information from core to core. So if you ever run Go Max Prox and it runs a little bit slower, you know, that's one of the things you might be running into if it's a, a case where it needs to communicate and, or synchronize. Um, but let's say you have something that's real computational heavy and it doesn't need to communicate these threads these uh, Go routines don't need to communicate at all. Well, yeah, it probably would be faster to put these on separate cores. You know, that way they can just keep knocking stuff out and they don't get in each other's way. This one is concurrent and parallel. So uh, when given the chance, if it makes sense uh, for the problem that we're trying to fix, if we can use concurrency and parallelism, great. We can get a lot more done a lot quicker. So 
Yes, we're doing lots of things at once, so we're handling lots of different things in case we get held up on any one of the cores. Uh, oh, sorry, that one's concurrency. That is dealing with many things at once. And the other one is uh, doing lots of things at once. So, you know, what's going on with this go, the go routine on this thread and the go routine on that thread? Well, they can work at the same time as long as they don't have to uh, worry about uh, synchronizing or communicating with each other. So Go routines versus operating system threads. So again, to quote Rob Pike, it is all right to think of them as an extremely cheap thread. Now I know what some of you might be saying, well, hey, that is not, you know, they're, they're different things. Yes, that's true. You know, the Go routines technically get uh, assigned to threads or mapped to threads. So if we take a look at it, um, it is nice having multiple threads. Let's say if you have, you know, or, or grow routines, because let's say you have a bunch of requests coming into your web server. It's nice to be able to handle, you know, many requests, whether that be, you know, thousands, you know, of requests, you know, in a short span of time. So an operating, operating system thread, you know, it could be anywhere from about, you know, a thousand to 2000 kilobytes. Now here's the really good thing about go routines. Go routines are extremely light. So you can handle many, many, many things at the same time. So go routine, you know, as of, you know, go 1.4, you know, is two kilobytes. So two kilobytes versus a thousand or 2000. So you imagine we can have many more go routines than we can have just regular operating system threads. And, so this can, like I said, this can easily be in the tens of thousands. Some people have ran tests, you know, close to millions, but I mean, uh, kind of depends on what you're doing, how, bi uh, how big those Go routines need to be. Now they start off at two kilobytes and they can grow as needed if your application demands it. Um, communicating using channels is low latency compared to using inner thread communication. So uh, we're going to start talking about channels in the next couple of videos as well. And it's just a very efficient way of talking between the two. Uh, Go routines can be created and destroyed with very few resources. So this takes less time and it doesn't take as many resources, say if you're, uh, you know, you know, building up or tearing down a operating system thread. And, uh, like I said, there is no one to one between a Go routine and operating system thread. A Go routine is mapped onto one or more threads according to availability. So, uh, the Golang runtime is going to go ahead and handle that for us. So we don't have to deal, we can be abstracted away from all of that. So here's one of the problems we may run into anytime that you need to share memory. So if you have to, if your situation requires communication, so that's synchronization, let's say like with this one, we have a unique baseball card. There's only one of this baseball card. If this thread, this thread here and this thread here aren't communicating, and if they both sell the baseball card, you know, quote unquote, sell it at the same time, well, we're going to have an issue. Now we've we have a double cell and we only have one card and that is a problem. So in some situations, communication is going to be necessary. We're going to cover some more of that in the next couple videos. So, uh, some of the things that we'll be using will be the sleep function and the time package, which is, this one is more for demonstration is not preferred. Uh, but it pauses a current go routine. Let's say like the, uh, you know, funk main, if it go funk main finishes before uh, the other go routines finish. Well, the other go routines won't finish. You don't want uh, funk main to finish before those other go routines. Um, that's one way of doing it, but not the preferred way by any means. Um, we're going to be using the sync package where we can provide mutual exclusion locks. Where we can kind of uh, make sure only one of the uh, go routines has access to that memory. Um, but again, you know, synchronization is going to be a lot better if we're using channels. So channels is really what we're going to be after, which provides connection between two go routines, allows them to communicate. So, uh, if you like the video, um, uh, please like and subscribe really, really, really does help me out and appreciate all the support I've been getting. Um, looking to do this more full time. So, uh, any little bit, uh, really is appreciated. I'll see you guys in the next video.